Cobra. So this guy's emotional reaction to the new Star Wars trailer has gone viral. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> A version posted on Twitter already has over half a million views. And please don't harass him or leave nasty comments because that's not what this video is about. What it does do is serve as a reminder that we live in an age of emotional incontinence. As Theodore Dalrymple wrote, we live in an age of emotional incontinence when they who emote the most are believed to feel the most. But doesn't crying over such superficial and trivial things cheapen the authenticity of emotional expression? Doesn't this cultural pressure to overshare and over-emote actually shrivel our capacity as humans to handle real trauma? Last year, Twitter users revealed what made them cry. The answers included people who cried about not being able to fit all the things they wanted in their bag and getting the wrong sauce with their chicken McNuggets. What would our ancestors, who lived through things like the Great Depression, Think of our emotional fragility in 2019. Bruh. We increasingly live in a society where people, predominantly those on the left, are so precious, so emotionally feeble, that they have nervous breakdowns whenever someone challenges their opinions. This is now spilling out into the political world. When criticism of Ilhan Omar's comments about 9-11, when criticism of the daily drivel that emanates out of the mouth of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is framed as inciting violence against a member of Congress. No, criticizing your dumb statements isn't inciting violence against you. There also seems to be a link between men in the West becoming increasingly emotionally unstable and their adoption of left-wing politics. As testosterone levels plummet, we now see traditional archetypes of masculinity being pathologized. Not just by far-left academics and feminists, but by giant multinational corporations. As philosopher Slavoj Zizek writes, in the old days of heterosexual normativity, homosexuality was treated as illness. It is now masculinity itself which is medicalized and turned into a sickness to be fought. The American Psychological Association even claims that suppressing emotions and masking distress, once considered a respectable coping mechanism in line with stoic philosophical teachings, is now a form of toxic masculinity. They say that men suppressing their emotions leads to more risk-taking, aggression, and competitiveness. As if that was a bad thing. The left also blames the right for the rise of incels, when it was the institutionalized left's masculinity public shaming campaign that created a generation of confused, broken boys. When you relentlessly vilify and demoralize men for being men, what do you think is gonna happen? Diversity hire, you got anything? <laughs> I'm kidding, straight white men are canceled. When on the one hand, you encourage men to cry to challenge gender norms, then on the other hand, laugh in their face and claim, lol, male tears, hashtag masculinity so fragile. Do you think that might cause some level of emotional disarray? Now, I'm not saying that I'm the most macho man in the world, but what is it about these guys where they all appear to have the same look. And there's actually some pretty interesting science behind this. Researchers at Aarhus University in Denmark analyzed the bicep size and views on economic redistribution of hundreds of men in America, Denmark, and Argentina. They found that physically stronger men were less likely to support socialist wealth redistribution than physically weaker men who were more likely to support it. Another study conducted by Michael Price, a senior psychology lecturer at Brunel University, London, came to a similar conclusion. The study recruited 171 men and measured their shoulders, chest, and flexed biceps. The men were also asked to squeeze a dynamometer to measure their grip strength. And the study found that stronger men were more likely to believe that you should keep what you earn, whereas weaker men were more likely to believe in socialist redistribution policies. Even financially poor men, who were physically strong, still didn't believe in redistributing wealth. This is at least partly evolutionary because a survival of the fittest type world 
favours stronger men. Another study found that already attractive people are more likely to become right-wing. So physical weaklings and ugly people are more likely to become left-wing. And anyone who's been present at an Antifa protest has experienced that firsthand. This also goes some way to explaining the left's fetishization of Islam. By any reasonable definition, Islam creates a hyper-masculine, patriarchal, male-dominant society. When faced with the option of confronting or submitting to such a force, the leftist mindset will always choose submission as a more successful long-term survival mechanism. So I just see the Star Wars cry guy as a manifestation of a society that has its priorities back to front. <laughs> A manifestation of a clown world that tells young men that their very innate biological drive to exhibit masculine tendencies is morally reprehensible. A manifestation of how Western man's emotional impulses have been completely scrambled. What? A manifestation of how our society has lost faith in itself, in its history, and has retreated to the distracted comfort of bread and circuses. <laughs> Please click the big red button to subscribe, it really helps me when you do that, and click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.